Cycler is here, so this is finally a new tutorial for you. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while now, and I hope you will find it interesting. And so, yeah, let's get started. So, as you can see um, by the title, this is a tutorial about Copic markers. Now, it's not about a, how you can color with them, like the technique itself. Um, if you're really wondering how you can, um, like, how can you use and how you can color, and like what um, the motions, like, all how to really use the Copics, I really highly recommend a little tutorial that Bailey Creations has. Um, done a couple months ago, and I will put a link somewhere on the screen. So that's like Copic blending techniques. Um, she basically shows like how you can blend colors. This tutorial is going to be about how to choose colors. It's really, really different and it's really a huge part of any coloring project. Now, before I start really getting into like what I did here and how you can choose colors, I want to say something really important first of all. Um, what I say is only my own opinion. This is how I interact with like the tools and how I use them. It doesn't mean you have to follow everything and surely it doesn't mean I've got it all right or you know, I'm still experimenting a lot with copy markers. I'm discovering a lot of things every time I use them. So you never stop learning things. That's what I wanted to say. The second thing that I want to say is what I'm going to um, tell you, like all the tips and like the basic rules I'm going to give to you. They work for every coloring tool. It can be colored pencils, acrylic paint, liners, like watercolor markers, anything. For example, like I have this chart that I um, made like a couple days ago of my Polychromos Faber-Castell pencils, colored pencils, and you can tell um, every coloring tool has a color wheel, which basically means that it goes like from uh, a certain color to another color and it goes like that and kind of like traveling around um, like the, um, the color wheel of a rainbow or um, like every possibility. You know, there's millions of colors, but when you have a coloring tool, each one of them has a specific tone, a specific hue, a specific value, and it's in like Every coloring tool has essentially the same thing, um, but what's great about all of those is that um, you can have so many options, you know, because when you blend and you mix them, you're going to create new colors, but it also can be really hard because you don't really know how each color is going to react with the other and how can you really choose them, how can you follow, like, because Copic markers is even harder because there's so many colors, so like 300 and I don't know exactly, this is my chart, as you can tell I don't have all the colors but I have a lot of them and if you consider that every color can be mixed with another color, do you picture how many possibilities you have? If I mix one color and I can be like I can mix it with every other color, that means for every color you have like 370 matches which like Basically, you have thousands of possibilities when you blend Copic markers. Or, um, it works well with Copic markers because the ink is translucent, but with colored pencils, it's kind of the same. You just have to lay the colors, um, like slightly and then blend them, and you can create more tones. But it's really, really, um, like efficient, and you can really notice that with Copic markers. But what I wanted to say is that, yeah, it works for every tool, every coloring technique. Uh, acrylic pastels or like any maybe even a computer but on computer you have so much possibilities because you can really like um, I don't know you have access to millions of colors but you can't the eye like the human eye is is not gonna be able to to see millions of colors you can't really see millions of colors um, you have to choose and try to replicate um, like an, an overall tone, you know, you can't really like tell the difference exactly between three or four or five flesh tones but if you look at your own skin uh, you can see that if you're trying to analyze this way, before I really start getting into how you can choose the colors basically when you color something uh, in, in art you're trying to repl replicate what you can find in real life, you know, you're trying to find, like, if you paint a tree, you can paint it orange, blue, white, green, whatever you want to do, you can, like, have fun with that, but you're still gonna create, like, values and trying to play with the light and, like, trying to make it look, like, 3D or, you, as long as you're trying to color something, you don't have to have to, um, trying to find, like, how to make the image look like, 
dimension, you know, like edgy or it can be flat coloring. It doesn't really depend on the style, but you, you can't just like, unless you're working like in black and white, but if you work with color, you have to make a decision on like the colors, like what you shade with, how to do highlights, all of those things. And if you base yourself on real life, so look at like any kind of thing that you have around you, like those glasses, I don't even like, I had bring something random here, but um, like shiny things, like there's like pinks and dark greys and red, everything reflecting in, inside it, you can't really tell, there's so many colors. Skin, for example, if you look at your palms, you have like blues and reds and like peach colors, there's even like dark, um, copic, <laughs> copic swatches and the, there's so much colors, you can't really like emphasize really like exactly but if you look at basic things for example this like piece of um like this scissors they are red and black like there's nothing crazy about it they're, like if you look closely at um, like how the shadows are casting on this it depends really on what's behind it but um, you will probably have something reflecting inside but most of all if you look at something plain you're gonna end up with like some white highlights and dark um, the dark is gonna be like a bit like a dark red, you know, there's nothing crazy about here, there's like red, you can have like light red and dark red. This is one way of shading, you don't have to like shade in different way, but the basic things is like shading your basic color, you have your basic color and then you're shading with a lighter color of this, so like Take a light red with uh, with this medium red you have, and you're gonna shade this dark with this red with a dark red. This is the basic things. Now, with Copic markers and in general with art and like what I like to do is shading with different color families. Now, um, it doesn't mean you don't have like you can't really do the the basic shadings with like every color matches the same. Uh, hues like the same color like red with red blues with blues greens with greens uh, browns with browns. It's it's perfectly fine But I really like and it's it's working really well with Copic markers is when you blend them and you're overlaying colors You're gonna create so much more dimension in your drawings that I th I think it's really important to have a couple like of a couple rules in your in your in your head when you're trying to select the colors, um, and yes, yeah, so I'm gonna try to explain to you how I choose colors and like with the little gradients and like the basic things about choosing colors with Copic markers because it's really specific to this um, coloring coloring tool. And I'm gonna show also a little some example like the difference between shading with classic shading and shading with different color families. So um, I'm gonna describe a bit of my artworks, and I'm gonna name a few of art, a few artists that are using the exact same thing when they use colors and they in their colored artworks. So if you can like, if you look at some of my artworks, it really shows like in my Lady Butterfly artwork or um, like a flight picture. Like most of my artworks, they are full of colors, which basically means like every piece of it. It's gonna be shading and blending with another family or like it's really like it's like you're traveling inside a drawing and you kind of have a pop of colors and it's always like a lot it's really colorful now when you blend with Copic markers or any kind of tool you don't have to add this color like this pop of color uh, like always blending one color with a different tone or like a different value you don't have to add those crazy uh, colors but so I consider myself like a colorful artist and there's some other artists that I really like that are doing exactly the same um, color wisely color wise um blue rose arkel on youtube and if you don't know about her i will put the link below her channel is amazing she's doing so great art and the way she uses colors is basically what i'm gonna teach you here and what i use also is um like she blends every color every part of the drawing is shaded with a different color family instead of saying in the same family when i say family whether it's Copics or any kind of other colors, um, I have this chart here, this little gradient that I did with Copic markers. The only thing missing is the earth tones. I will speak about it after, but when I say family, that basically means like blue, violet, greens, yellow, you know, the basic, like the, um, the pinks. Uh, you can describe like, I don't know exactly how many family. You can have blue, grays, you know, you can have like thousands of families, but the basic 
a color group, I'd say. And every time I see like those kind of artworks, I can name like thousands of artists who are doing that. If you compare like an artwork that has been done with like basic shading, which basically means like shading oranges with oranges or browns, shading reds with dark reds, shading blues with dark blues, and then you try to do the exact same drawing, uh, shading everything with a different color family. You're gonna see a huge difference. I'm gonna show you that just in a second after I explain uh, a bit more stuff about the gradients and things like that. But it's gonna be a huge difference. Trust me. If you don't follow this, like just try. Just try. This is how you're gonna experiment with Copic markers or coloring. You have to try to see how a color can react with another. Um, but yeah, so Rose Blue Rose Arkell is doing that, and you probably have heard also of Benjamin, the famous Chinese artist, he is doing like computer artworks. And I have an art book just right here, but it's like under my pile of art books, so I can't really show that to you. So you can uh, see what I'm do what I'm talking about when I say like blending with with colors and with different color families. This this technique, the, those those like little tips, cho like choosing the, co the right colors is gonna make your artworks amazing. Like the, the difference is, is insane. And I didn't believe it until I really tried to do basic shading and a, and a, and a, um, a, more, a more like color change shading. And it really makes a, a, like a huge difference. Um, but yeah, Benjamin is doing that also, and I really like it because, you know what, when you're trying, like, I think it's really important when you're starting with any coloring tool, but especially Copic markers, try to work with every family first, you know, you don't have a lot of colors, it's pretty hard to blend them, try to get, like, when you're starting with Copic markers, it's really great if you're starting with, like, grays, or even blue, like, skin tones, or, like, all the, um, the grayish blues, try to find like at least like five colors that are in the same family from like a light to, to a dark, from light to dark and try to work this family first so you can play with values and how you can really like have this three dimension like it's really important, like, I think it's really really great when you don't know how to choose colors to start uh, working in black and white first and then if you're starting with colors, try to follow like monochrome uh, drawings, you know, try to focus like in uh, maybe just just the red and oranges and like just the same like family or like warm feeling or cold, you know, or browns. Just stick with that and then when you feel comfortable, you're going to be able to mix families. Rule number one, every color can be mixed. That is true. Every single color can be mixed. Rule number two, you need a chart, guys. Like, if you haven't, even if you have like five markers, first thing you want to do, do this. Like, I lost my first chart and I got so pissed off. Like, I, I was struggling because even though after a while you're gonna know the colors a bit more and you're gonna have like, because now what I like about like working with copy markers, every time I color like with other colors for example because I mixed a lot of like I do mixed media work I can always I can I can have that that um automatic uh, move which is like basically if I look at a color I know exactly what's the best color to match with this and but you never know exactly how it's gonna react and I'm making mistakes all the time because I'm trying, I'm trying, oh yeah, this can work well, but oh man, it's too dark, oh, I need a medium tone to fix it, like, all the time. But having a chart really, really helps. First of all, no, so yeah, second rule, just having your chart can be this thing or a swatch book. Uh, you can also have your own made chart, just like, go find the name and like do like your little handmade chart you don't have to like have this hand colored copic chart because um this chart that I, I what i don't like about having this chart is this is why you need rule number three is because uh although it's really like in families you know like have from light to dark and it's gonna it's, it's it's still hard because you have a lot of empty spots you don't really know how you can mix this brown with this red or this with this green it's 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 yeah it's a bit harder because there's so many colors you can't really understand exactly how they work together so you need more than that 
Now, um, I have this thing here, which I didn't have before, and I don't think it's really that helpful, but I just want to show you this Copic um, color booklet thing that shows the color wheel. Why I'm showing this to you, because this is, um, it's kind of like a matching thing to, to that, but um, it's better, because you really understand how colors respond to each other. By responding to each other, I mean that I also have this little rubbish thing here, but I can't really show you that to you, it's so bad. But um, I'm going to show you with this gradation that I did here. Because it's the same purpose here. What you have on the color wheel. So it explains a lot of things here. The color family, brightness number, cool name. Like, I mean, it's, 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 this um, is a nice thing to follow, but it's not the best thing to follow. Because I found out that some reds look pink. Some greens look yellow, some yellow look green, so you don't really, don't like follow exactly the color um, numbers. You have to follow how they look. This is why you need the swatches, uh, the chart or the swatches book. But what I like about this thing, uh, so it says like, I hope you can really see that, but it says basically when you blend, you're gonna have to, uh, you, you can blend like with three or four markers, but if you have more colors, you're gonna have a, a smoother gradient, but you also need a lot more space. Um, but you can still, I mean, you can still work things out because um, I have like really small swatches, really small piece of paper, and I still find my way to do like those gradients, so you don't really need a lot of space, but of course, if you have more markers, it's gonna be easier. This really, really is important when you have colors that are really different. For example, here, of course, I'm blending blues with blue. They're like, um, if you have like two or three gaps between colors, you know, like I have like here, I don't have every colors. I have like B0, B02, B05. I don't have the colors in the middle. I don't really need that because every time you're using Copic markers, you're going to blend them. So you're going to create those like, middle colors. You're gonna link them together by blending, so you don't really need exactly every color in inside them. But for example, here I have everything because I found that, that they are too different to blend them. So you're gonna need that link, that connection between them. But what I really like about this um, color wheel, it explains a lot of things. So rule number three to me is you're gonna have to match color family. Now, you probably think it's kind of weird because I said to you you're gonna have to like change color family. Now I'm saying to you you're gonna match color family. What does that mean? That means if you follow this, that uh, on this color wheel you can see that every color uh, is next to another color family, which basically means that blues are next to blue greens and blue violet. Um, those two families, like it's the blue green and the blue violet, have something in common because they're in the mid. Like they have something in common, which you probably have earned just by hearing the name. They are blue in common, which basically means that um, the blue green, the blue greens, um, have blues in them, and the blue violets have blues in them. But what's really great about coloring is that every family has a part of the family next to it, which basically means also that every blue-green has a part of blue and has a part of green, every blue-violet has a part of blue and a part of violet. Now, it's so silly and pretty obvious when I say that, but this is how you're gonna mix colors, even though you probably think they don't really look alike, is by matching colors family together. Now, when you blend any color, the basic, like, the, the ground rules is to go one color away, like one family away, or two family away. Not more than two, because if you travel too far away, you're gonna end up with a family that has nothing in common. When I said that blue-greens have blues in them, and blue-greens have greens in them, that means that blues and greens kind of be mixed together, because if you mix blues and greens together, and then those family here, you're gonna create blue-green family. But, if you mix blue and yellow greens, this means you're gonna create, like, you can't blend them, you can't blend them that easily, because blues are not a part of the yellow-green family, and, and the yellow and greens are nowhere inside the blues. You need something in the middle, whether it's a green or a blue-green. So, that means every color and earth tone are a bit different. I will talk about it after, but on this color wheel, every color can be matched with anything as long as you keep one or two family away from it, which 
means if you follow me now, any blue greens can have a blue or a blue violet mixed together. Now it's not the best match ever. It does depend. It depends on the color exactly. Some blue greens doesn't mix that well with purples, but you can have to connect them, you know. Uh, of course, if you go like one color family away, it's perfectly fine. It's really easy to blend them, whatever, you, no matter what color it is. Of course, when I say um, no matter what color it is, you can't blend a really light blue-green with a really dark blue. Not working. You have to follow the same values, of course, which I'm going to talk about after. But if you go like more than two families away, so if I blend blue, like, like go really far away, like two separate colors, really different, a blue-green, like any, any blue-greens here, you want to blend them with the red. So you can see that um, they are extremely different, they are under the total uh, opposite on this color wheel, because there's not a single part of blue or, or green in a red. Now you're probably wondering how can I, how the heck can I mix if you want to mix, you don't have to, but if you want to mix them to have like something really cool in your drawing, you know, mixing a blue, green and a red is impossible, you're wondering like how the heck can I do that? You need something in the middle, you need that link, at least one. It's better if you have two because they are really, really different. I say that it's gonna be hard to um, use one, but try to get closer to this family or the other. So this means you're gonna have to find something that they have in common, you know. And you you know that blue greens have uh, greens and yellow greens in common, you know. And you also know that um, they have like blue and blue violet in common. So all of this, like this, uh, they have in common the blue, like this family. But the red has still nothing in common with the yellow greens or the blue violet. Still too far away. So you're gonna need at least two links. You know, if if you really go like all the way on like on the other side of the other side of this color wheel, you need to match it with something that has the same um same letter or like same use, same value. So for example, it is gonna be really easier for me if I have at least like a red violet a blue violet and then my blue green because every family has something that can link it to another family you need that I think I covered that now <laughs> uh, if you're not understanding everything please tell me below I'm trying my best to explain this in English and I will do this in French also but I really think it's important that um, you don't really need this uh, booklet. You're gonna, you can just basically this little gradient that I did to, um, like uh, two days ago, which was basically selecting any like medium values, like medium um, values of each color from RV04 to RV04, which basically shows that you can travel on the color wheel until you connect every family and you come back to the same exact color. Now it's a bit tricky for some colors because um, they are a bit too different. I didn't really do a great job blending them. But um, I went from RV and then R, Y, R, um, sorry, red, yellow, red, yellow, yellow, green, green, blue, green, blue, blue, violet, violet, and RV again. Everything can match together. Now when you, when you see that rainbow uh, gradient, now you can have in mind that every color next to each other, family, like every family to next to another family, can be blended together. Now you're probably wondering why the heck would I want to blend with different color family? Can I just blend red with red? Of course! There's nothing wrong about it! But I'm gonna show you exactly why it's so great to change color families.